Hello, uh, welcome to another Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out Session. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and uh, again, acknowledging the support and uh, excellent uh, technical foundation uh, provided for this through the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a service of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, for this, uh, we're going to take a little foray into ovarian pathology, uh, and our case is uh, actually that of an incidental finding. A 44-year-old woman had uh, an oophorectomy uh, along with uh, hysterectomy for other causes. And on examination of the ovary, uh, a uh, small mass lesion was identified in the uh, uh, parenchyma. Here's a representative section. And you can see we have some normal structures here at low power, the corpus albicans and cortex of the uh, Stroma, and then we have this uh, more bluish area here on section that looks a little bit different, a little bit odd, um, and uh, worth uh, looking into. So let's uh, dive down to higher power. Uh, we can see that it looks like we have two components. We have a uh, paler component here with some cystic changes, and we have a more uh, uh, basophilic uh, stroma. Let's focus first on the epithelial component here, uh, or at least we believe it's epithelial based on the pallor. And we can see that it doesn't have a great deal of uh, atypia. Uh, there is not too much nuclear pleomorphism. The cells have uh, fairly bland nuclei, uh, moderate to abundant cytoplasm, and even fairly well-defined uh, cytoplasmic margins. If we go here to a little bit uh, uh, more uh, adjacent area, we can see that some of the nuclei have a few small chromocenters, such as right there. And there may be a suggestion that some of them are, have a little bit of a groove on some of the uh, uh, nuclear membranes. But by and large, the nuclei uh, don't have a lot of uh, thickening to the membrane or irregularities. They look fairly benign. Surrounding these uh, nests are a uh, spindle cell fibromatous type uh, stroma. Looking at uh, some of these uh, cystic areas here, for example, this one here, uh, we can see that there's some eosinophilic or proteinaceous uh, secretion, and that a few of these areas have sort of a multi uh, cystic uh, areas or almost even a cribriform uh, pattern uh, without much atypia. So these uh, little remnants here are uh, reminiscent, or at least the epithelial islands are reminiscent of the uh, transitional epithelium that we see in Walthard rests, uh, which we find with uh, some frequency in the uh, fallopian tube and adnexal uh, structure serosa, um, which also can become cystic in this manner. Uh, looking at the stroma, we don't see uh, any direct evidence of uh, luteinization uh, or hormone production in this stroma, though uh, these tumors are reported to uh, be associated with some hormone production on occasion. Uh, this is a fairly typical size, a couple of centimeter size, but these lesions can also be um, really quite small. Uh, here's a case where you might actually uh, gloss over and miss it if you weren't uh, uh, looking closely. There's a slight abnormality here and abnormality here. Uh, we'll go and take a look at the uh, annotations here. And you can see that, again, we have a uh, nested pattern of epithelial cells with some central cystic change, eosinophilic secretion, uh, surrounded by a uh, fibromatous uh, stroma. And here on our other section uh, of this uh, same ovary, we can see, well, maybe you don't, there's, no, there's nothing here. So um, this is a nice example. Oh, the other, the reason this is here is that there is this also this associated very simple serous cyst uh, with this lesion. And sometimes these lesions can have associated uh, serous or even mucinous cysts or simply uh, transitional uh, 
cellular lesions that have become cystic. Um, let's get an image of, uh, or look at a gross image of these tumors. Sometimes here we see they have this uh, lobulated appearance, variable uh, white and yellow uh, appearance. Um, the yellow sometimes is indicative that there's hormone production uh, in the uh, fecomatous uh, stroma. Now I mentioned also that these lesions can have other cystic components. Here's a section of a tumor that has uh, what looks like three large cystic spaces. And then right here is our Brenner tumor with a transitional epithelium. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have many cystic areas, a fibrothecomatous stroma, and uh, some solid nests. Um, now, these adjacent uh, cystic spaces are interestingly associated with a squamous type epithelium. As you can see, there's keratin here uh, in this case uh, with a very thinly stratified uh, squamous epithelium. Um, and then we see that these lesions, again, can be solid or focally cystic with eosinophilic secretions. Now, the presence of a monolayer squamous type epithelium does not imply that this is a uh, mature teratoma. Um, it may be that that's uh, related to the transitional metaplasia. These lesions can also become uh, very firmly fibrotic with a, uh, again here, a uh, keratinized uh, content, but loss of uh, the epithelium. Now this could have been a, a teratoma, but most likely it was not. Uh, looking at another case, uh, we find another uh, variation on this uh, lesion. Take a look at some of the uh, uh, stroma here, we can see this fibrothecomatous stroma, solid nests of uh, cells. And here again, you can see very bland nuclei, occasional uh, chromocenters, and maybe a groove or two. Um, we also have a cyst adjacent to here, as in the previous slide. But here, rather than squamous, we see that this epithelium has a very bland, slightly mucinous character. Uh, and here's another area where, again, we have a mucinous epithelium associated with this lesion. Um, and this is a, a common uh, finding in Brenner tumors of the ovary. So this is an example of Brenner tumor um, defined as uh, urethelium uh, in small nests <clears throat> amid a fibrothecomatous stroma. Now it comes in several flavors. Uh, we've mentioned the potential precursor lesion, the cystic wall, Walthard rest, which has no stroma associated with it. There's the benign Brenner tumor, which is the most common uh, lesion that we've been uh, highlighting here. There also are cases where the epithelium can become atypical <clears throat> and have features of dysplasia, uh, in which case uh, the lesion is uh, uh, termed borderline. And then there are characteristic malignant Brenner tumors, uh, though these are quite unusual. Uh, in order to classify in this case, the uh, uh, epithelium must be clearly malignant, have an invasive component, and be associated with this uh, characteristic stroma. If you don't have the stroma, but you have the malignant epithelial component, then we would term it urethelial carcinoma. So that's a nice summary for today. Our final sign out is uh, incidental finding in the ovary of a benign Brenner tumor. Uh, thank you very much for joining. And we will look forward to passing through the door of uh, fascinating surgical pathology cases again uh, another time. See you then.